best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Birch. Hey, everybody. <laughs> that was a slow roll. Hey, everybody. This is Birch. And, um, you know, uh, what, what do we got here? We got uh, thank you for the channel and the question. All right. Well, I feel like I, I feel like being fluffed today. So let's let's read this mail. It says, hey, Birch. As a comic book fan who also loves to listen to YouTube breakdowns, I wanted to send you an email. Thank you for all the great content you post on your channel. No sarcasm, no jokes, no backhanded compliments. I genuinely enjoy your content, perspective, and insight. It certainly helped remedy some of my confusion for why the industry does what it does. It's completely insane to me that you receive death threats over your rather nuanced opinions, but I guess that's the world we live in. I, you know, I, I should have made it more clear in the video that I mentioned. Yeah, there's been an uptick uh, lately, but, but they're not real. At no point have I read these mails and gone, oh, shit, I, this guy actually could come after me. There's been one person in the last three years where I'm like, yeah, this guy might actually go take a run at it. Um, and, it, you know, it was a fairly failed writer uh, who was uh, just, just, you know, it's, it, and it was, he, he, the problem was the repetition. It was really like, and the whole thing was stupid. It's like, it started with, hey, I know you're not a bad guy, but you feed information to bad people. So you should just stop and do nothing. And then it was like, hey, why haven't you stopped yet? The guy kept following up with um, things like, hey, uh, I told you to stop. And I have, I have noticed you have not stopped. What gives? I'm like, oh, well, I didn't realize you were in charge of me. Uh, but well, it was just peculiar, right? Um, and then that progressed to uh, maybe you need to be stopped. And then that progressed to the, uh, uh, you know, hey, did you used to own this comic store? Is this you? It wasn't. Um, and then it progressed to, uh, I'm going to pay you a visit. And so it, it got creepy. But most of the death threats are like, you know, Maybe you should die. It's like, okay, I mean, maybe so. Someday, someday we'll all get our wish. Anyway, um, and that's that's true with the vast majority of stuff. I mean, it's no fun to see that stuff, and it, it's just, it's a, it's a grosser level of hatred, but, you know, it's not healthy for yourself to feed in too much of, like, could this be real? No, most of it's just, you know, a lunatic 14-year-old who's uh, not sure what to do with this hair that is growing where there was no hair before, and now they're making death threats. That's, that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. Anyway. Or be like Joe Glass and just say, comics need more dog. You do that too. I has, does Joe Glass know of the existence of Dick Fight Island, by the way? Somebody needs to recommend it there. You know, if you want dog, Dick Fight Island is your hookup. They literally fight with dogs. So, you know, problem solved. So it's right there. Anyway, uh, back to Mel. It says, anyway, on my question, one of your earlier videos, you talked about how comics got their audience they didn't want or intended. Instead of picking up a younger audience, they instead got older collectors and longer term readers. These people aren't supposed to be there as comics are meant, quote unquote, to be for 30 year olds, uh, long time readers such as myself aren't meant to be for those people. It's less that they got that. It's just they kept that audience. And I think it's it's normal for them to keep that audience. I just I, for whatever reason, the comic uh, publishers are like, those people are going to go away or or die. I, I I'm, I'm now remembering a conversation that I had like 12 years ago. where It's like, well, our our collectors, our core audience is going to die soon. And I remember going, how old do you think our core collecting audience is? It's like, oh, you know, like late 30s, 40s. I'm like, oh, my God. Do you, you think that think that like tons of people just drop dead at 55? Is that, is that what a 20-year-old editor thinks? That, you know, that life ends at 55. They're dead at that point. And I'm remembering a lot of conversation. It's like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm not looking forward to having to take care of my father. You know, he's going to be, you know, riddled with Alzheimer's and have to go into a home. Like, how old's your dad? It's like 42. Like, what? What? <laughs> like, oh my God. You... Well, buddy, it's not how that works. It's not how any of this works. Anyway, um, we keep going here. It says, um, uh, you then went on to talk about other businesses like Niantic, the Pokemon Go, managed to pivot instead of cater to the new unexpected audience with great success. This is Pokemon Go started gearing their features to your older audience who, you know, found Pokemon Go good exercise. And hey, you know, they made a shitload of money, so you can't argue with that. Uh, the mail says, my question is thus, why hasn't this happened in the comics industry? Is it bound to happen eventually? On the surface, it seems like a much, much better strategy to cater to the older readers. A more mature audience is way more likely to stick with a product, where kids, younger audiences, are easily swayed by new interests and whatever is cool at the time. Older audiences also have more disposable income, and thus more money to spend on comics, so why not pivot? Am I missing something here? 
I believe there have been small signs of this happening for a long time now, but the industry always seems to default back to catering to a younger kid audience. This applies to both comics and movie divisions. The success of media like The Boys, Invincible, the Marvel Netflix shows, Daredevil in particular, Dark Knight trilogy, and even the Blade trilogy, if we go further back, clearly shows that there's an appetite for darker, more mature stories out there. Imagine if the comic industry could harness this appetite to bring back some of the audience left out in the last decade. Of course, this isn't the audience they want, so I guess it doesn't matter. So why isn't it happening? Uh, well, the biggest reason it's not happening is because of, of kind of two factors, one that leads to the other. The first is that, you know, the comic industry is fixated on a true fact, and that is, you know, we really need to reach that new generation. We don't get to the new generation of readers. And, uh, you know, if, if it, it's just we're in a lot of trouble if we can't capture them because a generation's going to go by. We're not going to replenish our stores of people. The, the, the misnomer is that your, your current audience, that older audience, is going to drop dead any moment. So that's, that's not going to happen either. So what needs to happen is this uh, thing that's, that's, you know, it's not that tough, but they sure seem to make it tough, which is you need to appeal to both. You need to be able to appeal to new audience and old audience simultaneously. And that, that, you know, that would be hard if you were publishing like 10 books a month. But when you're publishing 80 books a month, it's pretty easy. The challenge is we have seen signs of this. I think the Peter David, you know, Maestro and Joe Fixit and some of the Ron Lynn, Ron Mars stuff that they're doing is clearly them trying to reach that, that, that older audience, the audience that is, is fond of that era, those characters, that creative team. That's clearly them trying to do it. The problem is clearly is not interested in, in that batch, or at least not as much as the other. So it, it feels, whether Marvel believes it or not, or I, I don't know if they necessarily realize it. Same thing goes for DC, by the way. It feels like a half-assed effort. It feels like, uh, you know, Marvel is basically looking at this stuff going, well, you know, this is a way we can appeal to the older collector audience. It's true. But um, I put as little possible effort into it as we can. And right now, if, you know, somebody from Marvel who's kind of in this zone was listening to this, and I know a couple of people probably are, uh, you know, you're probably pissed by that statement. You're like, no, I put an effort into that. I, you know, I reached out to Ron Mars. I did the contract. I'm working with him. I'm, I'm doing all this stuff. Like, I, what the hell? You know, I'm, I'm putting in effort. Cool. But it's not being, it's not coming across that way. That's the challenge you have is that you, you actually may be doing a, a decent job in, in starting to see this, this market. You're just, uh, it smells to the audience, the, the marketing, the, 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 you know, revealing of this work you're doing isn't is it's it's coming across phony it's coming across like a half-assed effort that's uh that's the challenge you have so you know it's it's time to look inward a little bit and go hey if we do believe we're actually doing a good effort and i would say you're doing a fair effort i think there's a lot more that can be done but if you're if you're doing a if you're doing a few things why why are those efforts not being rewarded with more you know more press more sales more more thanks they should be so what are we doing wrong? This would be a good time to do a little design sprint or brainstorming and get yourselves in a room and go, guys, we, we, you know, we can do more, but why aren't the things we're doing landing better with the audience? I think a lot of it does come down to marketing. Bluntly, it comes down to how you're promoting and highlighting this stuff. It comes down to the fact that, you know, your kind of the, the thing that is, is perplexing about Marvel, DC, and, and to some extent image as well, is that they're, advertising and marketing what they're doing to the older collector audience. That is the people who are reading the previews catalog, who are seeing the stuff at the comic store, hell, who are even going to the comic store in the first place. That audience is your older audience. And so you're saying, I want the new audience. So you're putting, you know, new, new ideas, new concepts, new marketing. It's like, Hey, let's, uh, let's really promote what we're doing over here with these characters, make these major kind of retcon status quo changes, which and I'm not sure it would, but if it's going to appeal to anyone, it's going to appeal to that new audience you want. But you're you're marketing to the wrong place. It would be like like look if if you had a product that was really aimed at I don't know kind of liberal Democrats who are care about the environment and are in a same sex relationship. Okay, you've got a product that fits that demographic, and you're like, all right, we need to start advertising for it. Well, clearly the place we want to advertise for it is Newsmax and Fox News. That's that's where we're going to do it. Or, hey, here's a product uh, like a, a nice uh, 
I don't know, a, a Gucci handbag. Perfect for, you know, women who are business successful and, you know, want to look their best, stylish, you know, all that kind of stuff. Let's advertise, let's, we're, the best place to advertise this is during, you know, NHL hockey playoffs. That's, that's how we're going to do it. It, it. That, that's the, that's the equivalent of what Marvel's doing right now. NDC. They're, they may have an, they may have a possibility of reaching that new audience, but they're, advertising and promoting everything to the exact opposite group that is ever going to go along with that. So, you know, what, what in the world are you supposed to do with that? That's the challenge. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, it's, it is baffling why this happens. They should pivot. I do think there will come a point where they, they, they do. Um, I think that that's, that's also somewhat inevitable that, um, yeah, it, it, well, put it this way: somebody comes in. There's some new leadership at uh, at Marvel, and the, that person basically goes, "Hey, you know what? Um, uh, screw it. You know, we, rather than uh, do, you know, let's just take the easy route for a while. Let's just do the easiest possible thing we can do to, you know, to to sell comics." And Twitter may not like it, and some of our kind of, you know, various activist kind of people who are employed here will like it, and, you know, it, it, we'll, we'll, we'll take a bunch of lumps from people saying we're just catering to the fans, and, you know, but uh, we'll, get, we'll get paid. And I guess we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to satisfy us with that, getting paid. That's the likely future we have here. <laughs> just somebody is going to come in and go, I, I am tired of uh, kicking this can up the hill. And I'm just going to do the easy thing for a while and screw it and make some money. And what's funny is that person will be, it, it will be lazier in a sense. They'll be, you know, doing, they'll be doing it easier. They'll, they'll make life easier for themselves and get rich in the process. It'll be nuts. I, I do less work, make more money. It's the American dream. Uh, but I do think that, I think that, yes, it, it, people are going to pivot soon i do believe so it's just uh we we haven't hit the moment the reason we haven't hit the moment yet is just unfortunately nobody nobody truly cares yet it, it, they don't need to you know it, it, right now um you you don't need the you know, comics don't need to make money not at the big two you know i mean and i say that kind of casually of course they need to make some money somehow but uh it, you know not not much nobody's paying attention you know, if marvel if marvel makes breakout profits or no profits it's, uh, it's all about the same at the moment, tucked under Disney like they are. Again, there, there's people I'm sure who will argue argue with that idea, but um, but it is what it is. Anyway, thank you very much for the mail. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and thanks for listening.